I went through this experience when I was 20 years old and we had Sunny Fly and um, we were about to go into preseason. It was the first day of preseason, January 4th. He drowned on January the 3rd and we were like 20 years old. And um, I think it's when you lose a family member, it's like, oh, that's my family, but when you lose a friend and you lost your best friend, it's like a different experience. And I remember that day so clearly. It's like, you know when you drop a plate and it feels like it goes in slow yeah, motion? Yeah, yeah. It feels like that. That whole day, it just felt like time stood still. I just remember every conversation. Um, you went through one of the roughest things I could imagine as a friend. What was that like, bro? Bro, it was heavy, eh? It was, um... Um... In terms of like, probably like 48 or like 40 hours from like, you know, hell, you know, you see like those things, but like 48 hours from hell, just like the whole search, you know, not knowing. So pretty much started off, go into our hostel, like 5 a.m., you know, out in Barcelona, having a mad time. All walk in in jibs and drabs, a few shielders, whatever, we're all in groups. Get back into the room, um, at hostel, there's... I'm meant to be with Liam, my brother, and Ricky. Mm. All three not in the room when I get back. Doing God knows what, whatever you do overseas. And um, Will was in another room with a chick, whatever. And then wake up in the morning and Ricky had come in and Will was there. And I was like, for a camp, I must have gone home with a chick. Like, it had happened a few times before on the trip, you know, I'm going home with this bird or whatever's going on. You're like, yeah, sweet. Whatever, you know, as lads do. You're like, yeah, so yeah. I'll text you tomorrow. Um, it's like 10 a.m., 10, 11 a.m. I'm like, um, fuck, he's still on it. He must be texting him, you know, fuck, where are you at? Nothing, nothing. Ends up being like one or two, and we're like, yeah, fuck. Like, he's not the type, you know, you get like those loose mates who you're like, you won't hear from him for a day or two. Like, yeah, that wasn't yeah. him. I'm mm. like, texting him, nothing, calling him. But his texts were going through, but like, I could, oh, maybe I could ring him, but the texts weren't delivering. I think he had reception, but not Bluetooth or, or what iMessage or whatever it was. But long story short, we're at the cop stations all from about 3.30, trying to do missing persons in Spain with Spanish police, trying to trying to half understand us. Mm. And say, oh, like, what happened? We're like, you know, didn't come home, can't get a hold of him. Well, you know, was he drinking? Yeah, yeah. They're like, oh, it's all right, you know, he's passed out somewhere, he's, he's at a mate's house. This happens all the time, we're like, not with him, you know, he's, he's switched on dude, he's, mm. Whatever. Go back again. New cop had come round the front. Spanish again. They hadn't relayed what we'd been trying to tell them the first time. Um, you know, frustrating, but they're like, oh, here we are, here we are, all this. We're like, we just want to do missing persons reports. You can start like trying to, you know, go back to the, the, um, the club and check security footage. Because we were tripping out going, fuck, did he leave with us or not? You know, when you're like, you have a big night, you're like, you can hardly remember walking home. I'm like, Hope we didn't like walk off and he was like, fuck, which way is it? And got lost, whatever, you know, like, whatever. And we go to the embassy, all this, on the phone, back to his mum, back home, trying to suss everything on, on the phone to uh, Queensland police, trying to sort out people over here. On the phone to ex SAS dudes who like know, know how to like find people, things like that, just trying to, you know, up all that night into the morning. Did you, did you feel like you knew? We, I knew about four in the Arvo the first day. I remember saying like, I reckon we have to really understand that something bad has happened because if he was, if his phone was dead, he knew where we were staying. He would have got a cab there. If he had no money, he would have got a cab and just ran and made us pay. Or, you know, he would have messaged us if his phone was, I was like, it just wasn't him. If it was somebody else, maybe you'd be like, oh, idiot, but like, Kind of just had that feeling like, you know, you start to have options like, you know, what could possibly, where could he possibly be if it wasn't something bad? Um, we were hoping he just kind of like got mugged, you know, and was just, had nothing and was in the middle of Barcelona somewhere and couldn't mm. get hold of anyone. Into the next day, into the cop station and then, mate, we put on Instagram, missing, oh, man, anybody, man. Had all this. Yeah. People thought we were ging up, you know, because, you know, the whole trip, we're just having the best time. The amount of messages we got, good and bad. Man, I got messages from people saying I know where he is. I saw him leave. He left with this dude, man. I, to the point where I printed off a photo of this dude, took it to the in the police station while we're waiting, took it to him, said, "Mate, this random dude's been messaging me. 
um, saying all this. Um, said he saw him leave with this dude. So now I'm going, feeling sick, going, fuck, what's this dude done? And then the next message is, sorry, I've got a problem. I just really wanted you to reply to me. Like, I'm a massive footy fan and oh, shit. And I was fuck? like, it like, you know, makes you want to, in, in those moments, you're like, fuck, I could kill this dude, man. You yeah. know, like, just, anyway. So there's shit like that. There's a lot of helpful people, you know, saying like, I used to live there. I know people here. I can interpret for, interpret for you, whatever. They know locals and that. And long story short, they, I was just with my brother, so it was like, probably about midday the next day, they like, um, went into like the constable's office, because like, any news, any news, whatever. They just kept saying, no, no, no. And then we're sitting in there doing a statement of like, rep like lost, uh, missing persons report. And he's like, oh, um, they found your friend. And we're like, I like looked at Will, I was like, kind of half smiled, but kind of was like, you know, I'm never going to like count my chickens. I was just kind of like, oh, mad, you know, like, and he'd be like, again, this is, he's, he's Spanish, you know, like, mm. it's more like, you just hear, they found your friend, it's not like, he's talking like me and you, he's yeah. just saying like, somewhat English, and then he just wrote down this address, he's like, oh, you got to go here, and I was like, that doesn't, you know, didn't sound very good, and then we went to this big um, uh, station, it was like a, the big cop station in Barcelona, went there, me and we were sitting there, in like this like waiting room, kind of like feeling sick like you know if he was sweet we'd be in a hospital and he's been bashed or we'd be like with him whatever he's waiting and I can see like um you know my old man passed away when I was like in 2011 like from cancer and that but like I've been around support workers I know what it looks like you know sitting there see support workers there like kind of just talking but like not to us we're just sitting there waiting and then getting a big table like this the interpreters here, there's big police, there's support workers, like, and we knew at this stage. Uh, yeah, they told us, and then, yeah, it was one of those things, like, I didn't cry, probably for like half an hour, it's just more like... Just didn't feel real? Yeah, still now, it's kind of like, I just feel like I'm sweet talking about it, and that, you know, like, I like talking about Liam and that sort of stuff, but just, sometimes I kind of step back and realise, like, how, like, I guess traumatic it was, but you don't, I don't really feel it like that. So it was a bit surreal, but it was a very, very heavy uh, 48 hours, you know, we were just like, I was always flying home the next day, um, they said they can't send Liam home for a couple of weeks till they do all the tests, or they couldn't send him home for a week, so like, we were obviously just going to, I was just going to stay there till we found out what happened, and then, I think that must be like a Tuesday, we we're always going to fly home on the Wednesday, and mm. I was like, fuck, get me the fuck home, hey, like at that stage, I was just like, there was nothing more we could really do, did a big statement after we found out with everything, and then, yeah, it was just, just sad, just, yeah. Uh, I just, like, because the thing that really, like, oh, this sounds super selfish, but it rattled me because it, you guys, that trip reminded me of, like, what me, Chico, and Norma used to do, Yeah, and it was like, you build such great relationships, Football's cool. Like, you jump on the field, do things, try and win a game. But those relationships that you built with it, and the fucking like, proper rattle, I mean, I remember texting, like, Norms, and I remember that loose nights that we used to have, and sometimes Chico would go missing for a day, and me and Norms would go, just, bro, I don't know, it proper rattled me, eh? Like, oh, and like, you went through it, bro, I can't even imagine. What was it, obviously, talking to his parents, and I know you're super close, and I've seen the messages they said about you. What was that like, bro? I don't want to... Oh, that was the worst part of it all. Oh, fuck. That, that was the worst part of it all, easily. Mm. Like, you know, I'm, I'm the communication from Barcelona back to his family. So I'm updating you with everything. So while they tell me I've got messages, like any, any news, you know, what's the latest? I'm just like, yeah, it took me like an hour to like get myself together to, you know, try to tell them that sort of stuff. So, and again, they've been so good, like, Stronger than I think most families would be, you know, just, they just express how grateful they are of like, one, I guess us being good mates to Liam and how much of a fun time we had, but then just like, you know, for sticking it out and doing that sort of, you know, like how much we obviously care about him as um, we did or we do, you know, but they just express their gratitude, you know, like of how tough it must have been on us. So I'm like, it was tough on us, but like, fuck, it's tough on you, you know, oh, you, you, you're just, the ones, you know, yeah. so they've been, they've been really good. They're doing their, um, the Hampo's Youth Foundation, which is cool. Um, yeah, he was a, um, just about to be a school teacher, just about to finish his uni. So I guess his passion was footy and 
kids, you know, without being a creep. But yeah, <laughs> kids. Um, Let's see a cat used to give me a laugh. <laughs> like, he, he looks like a bit of trouble on the road. Nah, nah, he was a good dude, man, obviously. Ledge dude, just one of those freak accidents, man. Mm. Just freak accidents. Um, what's the biggest lesson you've learned from that? Not so much about that, just in life in general. I guess it's just cliche, but like you never really know like how quick thing your whole life can just go change. So um, hasn't turned me off traveling. I still want to live my life like we we literally like the amount of times he was saying, you know, his family gets a lot of closure knowing the amount of times he was saying um, just how he's having the best time of his life. Like he wanted to travel yeah. Europe so bad, and it looked kept, like one of the great trips. Like mate, it was all time. We'll talk off 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 air, but no, he um. <laughs> I just um, just went single. He kept nagging me, nagging. I was like, I'm not gonna go, and I just thought, like, fuck, I'm gonna, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just gonna book it. This was just gonna be me and him, and my other brother ended up coming, and then a few of the boys ended up just like wanting to go. But such a good trip, man. Like everything we did was just like full throttle, and it was just fun. Mm. It was just best time ever. So, what was, what was your favorite thing about him? Him? Yeah. Honestly, his um, positivity. And, always and not positive. He, always he. We, we lived together for years and there was me, my brother, my ex and him for like about a two year stint and I was easily earning the most and he was easily earning the least but he was again easily the happiest. He was never stressed about money, he never had any, he was pretty stingy <laughs> but he was just, you know, like he was always one of those people who just tries to like get people to buy it, you know, like he couldn't really get in his head, he was always oh, just like okay. happy doing what he wanted to do and he was the least peer pressured person I'd ever met. If he thought wearing, like he had shit kit. If he thought wearing those shit kit with those slides were mad, you couldn't, you couldn't tell him otherwise. <laughs> he was confident in who he was. So yeah. he, he was annoying, like, fuck. We sprayed on that many times overseas, like, mm. as you do. He was, like, he was doing my head in. But like, we were pretty much like on that brother level in terms of, you know, when you live with someone, you have an argument, it's kind of awkward. Yeah. We'd been mates that long. It was like, I'd spray him to the point, like we know he got punch ups and then it's sweet. Yeah, and there's never that awkward, you know, we can say, like, shut the fuck up, Liam, you know, and he'd be saying it back to me, and then it's not like, yeah, it's not eggshells, it's just yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah. what are you doing later anyway, you know, it's just, <laughs> that's it. I love that. Um, those, those are the type of friendships you want. Don't yeah, you? and and I guess, honestly, just, he was always just, you know, he was always up at sunrise, going to the beach, and just, he was just, like, living life, like, he was happy doing what he did. Yeah, well, him, but, um, obviously, it must have been so tough to go through, and uh, I guess I know you a little bit, but, but I'm proud of you of how you sort of handled that, and not, oh, you learn a lesson from your life, but you haven't let it affect you. Like the fact that you're going on traveling in the off season again. Yeah. Um, me personally, I would have been like scared, eh? So, probably credit to you.